بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Part 23 The Invitation The peace which the Treaty of Hudaybiyah guaranteed for 10 years meant that people could travel from all over Arabia to visit the Prophet وسلم, and a great many came to declare their Islam, their Shahada. Also, during this period, the Prophet وسلم, decided that the time had come for his message to be taken to other countries, so he sent trusted companions with letters telling of his message to the leaders of the most powerful nations of the, of the day. It is recorded that he said, Allah has sent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorified be he, has sent me as a mercy to all men. So take the message from me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy on you. It is also recorded that sometime before that, when the Prophet وسلم, was digging before the Battle of the Trench, three flashes of lightning had bled forth from a rock. He had, he had been striving to remove. These flashes had shown him the fortresses of the civilizations of the South, East and West, which were soon to come into Islam. Now, at the time of the Prophet وسلم, when he sent out uh, the message, Abu Sufyan and some other members of Quraysh were trading in Syria, a province of the Eastern Roman Empire, later to be called Byzantium. Also, at about this time, the Emperor Heraclius, ruler of this empire, had a dream, and sadly told visitors to his court in Syria, I saw our empire fall and victory go to people who do not follow our religion. At first he thought this must refer to the Jews, and he even had it in his mind to kill all the Jews living under his rule. And under his rule fit, then an envoy from the governor of Basra arrived with a message for the emperor. O Emperor Heraclius, there are some Arabs in the city who are speaking of wonderful happenings in their country. And he then told of what had heard, he had heard about the Prophet On hearing this, Heraclius commanded his soldiers, go and find me someone who can tell me more about this. The soldiers, however, did not find those who had been talking about the Prophet but instead found Abu Sufyan and some of his companions and brought them before the Emperor. Heraclius asked, is there anyone among you who is a close relative to the Prophet Muhammad? Abu Sufyan replied, I am. So the Emperor addressed all the questions to him, thinking he would know the Prophet best. He said, Tell me what is the Prophet's position in your tribe? Abu Sufyan said, He's a member of our most respected family. Did So the, the Emperor continued by asking, Did anyone before him say these kinds of things? No, came the reply. Was he ever accused of lying or cheating? The answer came, never. Then the emperor asked, what about his ideas and opinions and his power of reasoning? No one has ever had cause to doubt him or find fault with his reasoning, replied Abu Sufyan. Who follows him? The proud or the humble? Abu Sufyan replied, the humble. Do his followers increase or decrease? They increase, said Abu Sufyan. Now there's a reason why Abu Sufyan was, re was responding like this. We'll come, we'll come to that, inshallah. None of his followers leave him. The emperor then turned to other matters and asked, if he makes a treaty, does he keep it? Yes, Abu Sufyan replied. Did you ever fight against him? inquired the emperor. To which Abu Sufyan answered, yes, sometimes we won, sometimes he won. But he never broke his word in any agreement. The emperor then asked, what does he say people must do? Abu Sufyan replied, to worship only one God. In Arabic, la ilaha illallah. He forbids people to worship as their fathers worshipped and says they must pray to Allah alone, give alms, keep their word, fulfill their duties and responsibilities. Now, Abu Sufyan was speaking the truth, even though he was an enemy to the Prophet ﷺ, and did not become Muslim until the very end of his life. But he was afraid to lie before the members of his caravan, who were also there with him. The meeting ended with these words from the, from the Emperor, 
I see from this that he is indeed a prophet. You said that his followers do not leave him, which proves they have true faith. For faith does not enter the heart and then just simply go away. I knew he was coming, and if what you say is true, he will surely conquer me. If I were with him now, I would wash his feet. You may leave now. It was not long after this that the messenger, Dehya, arrived at the Syrian court bearing the Prophet Muhammad's letter which said, If you accept Islam, you will be safe and Allah will give you a double reward. If you do not, you will have to live with the results of the decision. In other words, the con you will have to face the consequences. Heraclius grabbed the letter. He was so upset he could hardly control himself. He said to Dihya, I know your master is a true prophet of Allah. Our books tell of his coming. Notice that, ladies and gentlemen. Our books tell of his coming. The books they had back then. If I were not afraid that the Romans would kill me, I would join Islam. You must visit Bishop Dagatir, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, or Dagatir, I think it's Dagatir, and tell him everything. His word is more respected among the people than mine. So Dihya related the same message to the bishop, and when he heard it, Dagatir said, Yes, your master whom you call Ahmed, Ahmed means the praised one, by the way, is mentioned in our scriptures. Allahu Akbar. He then changed from his black robes into white ones and went and spoke to the people gathered in the church. O Romans, he said, a letter has come to us from Ahmed, the praised one, in which he calls us to Allah, the one known to God. I bear witness that there is no divinity but Allah and that Ahmed is a slave and messenger. That's the shahada. I shahadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Ahmed is another name for the Prophet, yes, exactly. Peace be upon him. But on hearing this, the crowd grew angry, attacked Dagatir, beating him until he was dead. He died a martyr, right there and then. He took the Shahada and he died right there and then. SubhanAllah. This is a, one of the mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Heraclius was afraid that the same thing would happen to him, so he spoke to his generals from balcony, saying, O Romans, a man has written to me, calling me to his religion. I believe he's truly the Prophet. We have been told to expect. Let us follow him so we can be happy in th this world and the next. The Romans cried out in anger when they heard this. So Heraclius quickly said, Oh, I was only pretending. I wanted to see how strong your faith was. I am pleased to see that you are true to your religion. Heraclius then suggested that they attack or give land to the Muslims in order to maintain peace. But the Romans refused. Realizing that he could do no more and knowing that one day Islam would conquer Syria, Heraclius left the province and returned to Constantinople the capital of Eastern Roman, uh, the Eastern Roman Empire. As he rode away, he turned around look, and looked back and said, Goodbye for the last time, O land of Syria. Meanwhile, another of the Prophet's messengers arrived at the palace of Ch Chosroes, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, the Shah, or the King of Persia, where he was told by the royal guard, when you see the Shah, you must bow and not lift your head until he speaks to you. To this the Prophet's messenger replied, I will never do that. I only bow to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Shah will not accept the letter you bring, he said. They said, and when the time came for the messenger to see him, the Shah was indeed very surprised to see the man holding his head high and refusing to kneel respectfully before him, like everyone else. Nonetheless, the Shah still read the letter. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful Or the Most Gracious, the Most Merciful it's the Same thing From Muhammad, Messenger of Allah To Khosros I hope I pronounced it correctly Sorry if I'm not Shah of Persia Peace be upon those who follow the truth And believe in Allah and his Prophet And who testify that there is no divinity but Allah And that Muhammad is his Messenger I ask you in the name of Allah because I am his messenger to warn your people that if you do not, they do not accept his messenger, his message, excuse me, they must live with the consequences. Become Muslim and you will be safe. If you refuse to tell them, you will be to blame for the ignorance of your subjects. The Shah was furious when he read this and he tore the letter into little pieces. When the messenger Returned to Arabia and told the Prophet what Khosroes had done. The Prophet said, May Allah also tear his kingdom into little pieces. 
and several years later it happened just as the Prophet had said it would. As with Syria and Persia, a messenger was also sent to the Negus or king of Abyssinia with the following letter. Peace. Praise be to Allah, the King, the All-Holy, the Peacemaker, the Keeper of Faith, the Watcher. He is Allah, there is no divinity but He, the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One, the All-Peaceful, the Keeper of Faith, the Guardian, the Majestic, the Compeller, the All-Sublime. Sublime, excuse me. Glorified be Allah for all that they associate with Him. Quran chapter 59 verse 23. And I testify that Jesus, son of Mary, is the Spirit of from is a excuse me let me correct this because this is this is written wrong is a spirit from Allah and his and a word this is this is written wrong by the way I'm, I'm correcting it which he cast to Mary the virgin the good the pure so that she conceived Jesus peace be upon him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him by his spirit and his breath and as he created Adam by his hand and his breath I call you to Allah the unique without any partner to his obedience and to follow me and to believe in what which came to me for I am the messenger of Allah peace be upon all those who follow righteous guidance the king of Abyssinia was a very wise man and he thought and was thought excuse me by the world to be a good Christian he had of course already heard the Prophet ﷺ and his religion from the Muslims who had sought refuge in his country a few years ago he was deeply moved by the letter, and when he came down from his throne, it was not just to show his respect, but also to declare that he was already a Muslim. He answered the Prophet's letter with one of his own. To Muhammad, the Prophet of Allah, from the Negus Asham, King of Abyssinia, Assalamu alaikum, Ya ayyuhan nabi, wa rahmatullahi. O Prophet of Allah, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sorry, I get emotional when I read the, when I read these. There is none like him who has guided me to Islam. I received your letter, O Messenger of Allah. Some of your followers, as well as your cousin Jafar, still live here. I believe you are truly a messenger of God, and reaffirm the pledge of allegiance I made to you some time ago before your cousin Jafar, at whose hand I has hand I joined Islam and surrendered to the Lord of the Worlds a fourth message had in the meantime traveled by boat to Alexandria to meet the Mukaukis, the ruler of Egypt who was a Coptic Christian in his letter the Prophet invited the Mukaukis to accept Islam because Christian Christians who believed in the messenger of Jesus should also believe in him for he had come with the same message from Allah it read In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, from Muhammad, son of Abdullah, to the great Copt, peace be upon whoever follows the truth. I beseech you to accept Islam. Become a Muslim. Allah will reward you twice. If you refuse, you will carry the blame for not following, for not allowing your people to share in this blessing. The Mukaukis showed respect for what the letter said. He treated the messenger well and sent many presents with him for the Prophet, but he did not become a Muslim. Although only Abyssinia responded to the Prophet's call of Islam, all was not lost. For a few years later, Persia, Syria, and Egypt all became Muslim countries. This finishes this part, and the next part I will relate to you the entry into Mecca. Having said that, thank you very, thank you very much for your time and patience. This is Behold the God. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and I'm signing out.